Know anyone who could use a good ass chewing? I could use a good ass kick, and I'll be very honest with you. But what if you could get that message delivered by an authentic drill instructor who spent 33 years in the army? Ha ha ha! You asked for it. For just 35 bucks, you can get a customized knife hand ass chewing for a person of your choice straight from the popster. I think you aren't even good enough to whiff the farts from a dog's ass. And monthly supporters of the regiment receive a $10 discount. I am hard, but I am fair. Use the Cash App code on the screen to send your donation along with notes on the person whose ass needs chewing. And the popster will handle the rest. So shut the f*** up! What's going on, you hamstrung handyman? Terrence Pop from Redonculus.com. Good Pop showed up today with some good news, courtesy of a fan called Steven. I'm certainly not going to use his last name because we're in current year and I do not want to see him lose his job. That would be bad. Kind of like what we're talking about today. Because every swinging Johnson out there has said a combination of the following words. She loves me. She's different. She's good people. And she's not like other women. Bullshit! <laughs> there you go. Repeat the down. But even after we get our hearts ripped out through our assholes, we keep saying these phrases. Stupid! You're so stupid! And for some people, they keep doing it over and over. And while the little head is doing all the thinking, we just can't say no to a live-in penis massager. And nowadays, that's about all it's good for because it sure as shit is not cooking, cleaning, or matching your contributions dollar for dollar. Equality! Ah! Pound some sand. So, Redonculus.com and Steven decided that you need this list. The warning signs before and after living together. You hear that? I didn't, no, I don't think you can with the amount of chill that just went up your spine. But that's the sound of everything in your bachelor pad being slowly boxed up and thrown the fuck out. Or she donates it to a charity and she writes the value off on her taxes and it's up to you to go there and buy it back. <laughs> There's a lot of guys out there that have already pulled this bullshit, went through the meat grinder, and they're going to be grateful I'm teaching you young bucks how to avoid their pain. If you're lucky and you listen to the popster, you might be able to get out of the situation with your ass still intact. With that being said, pour yourself a menagerie or a herbal tea that's spiked and let us begin. Yeah. The best place to start with any list, of course, is at the beginning. So the first list we're covering is all the warning signs before you move in together and you nail your penis to a house. And usually this happens when <laughs> you're getting love bombed. What the fuck? <laughs> and this is a classic chameleon maneuver. They will do anything for or to you during this time. They cook, they clean, they wine, they dine, and of course, they 69. Tell me more, tell me more, did you get very far? They even swallow the treat at the end and look you in the eye and tell you it tastes good. I feel so dirty. But if you move them in, you will find out in a New York minute if it's all an act. Spoiler alert, most of the time, it is. And if you call them out on this, they will gaslight you. She will put her hand on a stack of Bibles and go, well, that was just the puppy love stage of the relationship. Now we're moving on to bigger and better things, and you better up your game. All the while, hers goes away completely. <coughs> hoping that you will double and triple down on being the nice guy. So you can earn the love bombing treatment back. It's not going to happen, gentlemen. And if you pay close attention to these lists, you will see why. 
Warning signs before you move in together. Number one, she has debt and she is not working to pay it off. Now, finding this out sounds tricky, but it's really not. And if you're expecting her to tell you, <laughs> you are an idiota. The internet exists, gentlemen. You should know. <laughs> you're watching me on it. You get on one of these. You do a search for background check. You find a PI. Give them 300 bucks, and you're in business. And the main reason you shouldn't do this yourself is because you're dick thinking. And don't trust yourself at all when it comes to this. Until you are 35 beyond the dick thinking stage, you will butt fuck yourself in the dick hole. Inside of you? By way of your rectum? I think so. As long as she's doing the cheetah backflips on your peg D, you'll be thinking with this instead of that. So you need an impartial third party to make sure it's all done correctly. And number two, she has debt but continues to go into further debt. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that do this. They use debt to finance an illusion that they have money. This is very common, especially with young dudes who are caught in the dick thinking cycle. Let's be honest, gentlemen. It is shameful to go into the hole to finance you going into a hole. Come on, man. And that same hole isn't worth one-tenth of the value that your grandmother's was. Don't fall into the trap. Now, I'm not saying go tag your grandma, but this is bad. It's called hoflation. And number three, she will not discuss finances with you at all. This isn't even a red flag, dudes. It's a black flag, stunning and brave. You, well, you're the savior, and she's expecting you to play the part and bail her out. And if you're stupid enough to do this, as soon as that debt is gone, so is she. No, no, we haven't heard hundreds of stories like this in the past 15 years from our fans. That's completely ludicrous. <laughs> huh. Among today's 304s, loyalty and gratitude are in short supply. You'd be better off throwing your money at the Redneck Retirement Fund because then you at least have a chance to win. You will win the lottery and get struck by lightning before you actually get loyalty and gratitude from a 304. He's right. Number four, she objects to separate finances. And if you insist on maintaining separate finances, well, looks like the blame train just rolled into the station. She will cook your chestnuts over an open fire, look you in the eye and go, well, it's just a matter of trust. Oh, come on. You can't have trust without some rust, and that's what happens to your finances with a joint bank account. She will eat away at it until there is nothing left. He's right, you know. Number five, she won't agree in advance to split the bills. A woman who will not pay her fair share is lazy and entitled. Good luck with that, gentlemen. Chances are she was raised by a single mother and she missed out on that treatment and she wants you to be the daddy. While you're at work slaving away to pay all the bills, she's calling someone else daddy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Number six, she will not discuss chores or other responsibilities in the household. Bottom line, she doesn't want to talk about chores. She has nothing to bring to the table. And now let's be honest, gentlemen, most of the time you're going to be the primary breadwinner. You're making 80K. She's making 20, but she still wants you to do your fair share of the chores. Even though you're working 60 hours a week and she's clocking like 19 or 20. I got some news for you harpies out there. It's not unpaid labor if you don't pay shit. How dare you? If a man is covering all of the expenses, you are being paid extremely well. Because of him, you have an overabundance of time, which is one thing you never get back. Therefore, it makes it far more valuable than any money. Sit and spin on that. Moving on. <laughs> Number seven, you decide, yeah, let's move in together. And magically, she has no money to cover any of the costs. And here's the best part. She wants you to loan her that share of the money. But if you've been watching this show, you know you never loan a woman money. You're giving it to her. You just don't know it yet. 
Gentlemen, here's a rule of thumb. Never, ever loan money to a woman, even if they're in your own family. That's even worse. You're going to get guilt bombed from the very beginning. I even got gypped out by my mother. I loaned her money and I got the, you want me to pay it back? Get the hell out of here. That is now time that you exchange for money and you are out of both now. It's proof that Jesus died in vain and legally changed his middle name the fucking... Number eight. You coughed up the money. You made all the arrangements to move in. Everything should go smoothly, right? But all of a sudden you get this. I forgot to tell you something. Suddenly your entire agreement up in smoke. Bitch Maneuver 101. So, if this happens to you gentlemen, pay attention. Bail! Bang and immediately leave or hit the silk. Get out of there. If you let her get away with this, it only gets worse. Because you have taken her respect that she has for you and you flushed it down the toilet. And hopefully, you flushed the whole relationship along with the condoms that you use, Screen 5. An agreement is an agreement, and it should be signed, especially if you're dealing with a woo man. And anyone who modifies the agreement after the fact is trying to screw you over. And number nine, since you're moving in together, you should get a bigger place. She will frame that argument as, we need more space, and I want to be able to entertain and have my friends and family over. But... What she's doing is what she's always done. Using that to make it look like you have money, status, and influence. We call that maneuver the Kudge Factor, which stands for keeping up with the Joneses or Jamal, depending on where you live. I'm rich, bitch! And they will guilt and shame you into leveraging yourself into the poorhouse. And if you fall for this shit, guess what? <laughs> you just lit the fuse on your future divorce. And you want to know why? More expenses equals more time at work. And that gift wraps the excuse, well, you were never around. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't fall for the shit, gentlemen. Your peace is more valuable than this crap. I know. That's why I call the hooker. Number 10, let's just say you didn't get that far and you're resistant to moving in together. If she cuts off access to the slot C trying to manipulate you, if you know what I mean, you are done. Never ever give in to extortion because that is exactly what this is. But for you ladies out there that use this on the regular, don't stop. It's really working out for you. Let's be honest, dudes. If you are the type of man that a woman wants to move in with, you have options. You don't have to put up with this shit, gentlemen. Kick her to the curb, and just like a bus, another one will roll along shortly. It should never matter how much money and time you have on the line with a woman. If she threatens your peace, you have to be prepared to just walk away. But... Most of you don't realize your value. That's why we have a second list and why we're doing this video. This next list is made up of warning signs after you decide to sign a lease and move in together. Oh my God! Ah! Ah! You already moved in. Everything's set up. The ink is dry on the lease. She moves in and all of a sudden it's like, oh, things have happened. We need to change our agreement. This is the earmark of a deceitful, backstabbing liar. Just like the legacy media, she lied by omission. She didn't forget. She purposely left the information out because it wasn't part of her plan. And her plan makes you into a wage slave. <laughs> Good luck with that. Not a great plan. Number two, she does not keep up with her share of the chores. So let's get this straight. You're making a quarter of what I make and putting in a quarter of the time that I do at my primary job. But I come home to a dirty house, no food prepared, and somehow pussy's gonna make up for that. Oh uh, yeah, right. And that's only if she still love bombing you. She might not even try to bridge that gap at all. This is the end result of too much feminine influence in our society. 
Men are told from the very beginning, you're disposable and it's on you to provide and protect for a woman. And women, well, they're told what they can expect and what they deserve. That must be all of that male privilege I keep hearing about. <laughs> Space Ghost is on. Number three, I'm a little short this month, which is usually followed with a little bit of this because they think it'll make up for it. I got bad news for you, gentlemen. If you hear this more than once, you just got duped. You are officially a sucker, not to be confused with the broke ass mouth hugger you live with. You gotta do the math in your head, gentlemen. I love math because it's a universal language. Unless you listen to MSNBC or CNN because that's white supreme pizza now. You gotta be fucking kidding. Isn't there a word out there for women who exchange uh, favors for money? The word's right on the tip of my tongue, or perhaps on the tip of her tongue. <laughs> Number four, and we all know this always comes about, she talks about quitting her job. If this happens, you tell her the same thing you would tell a dude. Never quit your job until you have another one lined up. Especially if you were stupid enough and allowed yourself to get talked into the bigger place. Because without her income, guess what? You are starving. And this happens all the time because of a truth modern 304s never admit. They want to be kept women, and let's be honest, the majority of them are not worth it today. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, gentlemen. Every single relationship out there is transactional to a certain degree. But if you can literally come up with the numbers on a calculator, you're getting fucked and not in a good way. And guess who else is getting fucked while you're at work? Oh my god, it was too soon. <laughs> you knew that was coming. All over her face, neck, back, and thighs. And if you're really unlucky, you'll eat it right out of the waffle cone. Ah! Screen five. Ha <laughs> ha! That's disgusting. God, it's... Oh man, I got... You know the vanilla drips down the cone. I, ah! You're giving me a lump of vomit, bro! <laughs> Holy shit, that's disgusting. Number five, and you knew this was coming, no pun intended, the sex dries up. This will happen organically or a direct response to your behavior. If you don't fall in line with her psychotic plan, you are not dipping the wick. If this happens, you're bailing. You are done. If you allow that kind of disrespect, guess what? You will become a glutton for it. And that does horrible things for your peace. Speaking from experience, what can I say? Number six, your stuff starts to go missing. Oh, it looked old. It was worn out. It didn't match the colors, so I got rid of it. Never mind, I didn't talk to you. Fuck you and your respect. They will never admit this, but anything in your house that was touched by another woman or competition, that shit is gone. Let's pretend that's not true. Yeah. As soon as you try to stop that shit, they will put on a mask of practicality. We don't have room for this stuff. It doesn't match the colors. It's broken. It's old. It smells. That is how they slowly turn our place into her place. And if you're lucky or simpy enough, you get to have a man cave. And this happens in various degrees. Sometimes they don't actually get rid of it, but it'll just get moved or rearranged, right? I'm not getting rid of your stuff. I'm just putting it in storage. That is called predisposal camouflage. So say goodbye to your shit now. Bye-bye. Once that stuff goes into the box, gentlemen, it is gone. Just like your testicles and money screen five. <laughs> number seven. A lucky number. Not really. The nagging starts. Can't wait for that, can you? On this show, we refer to that as the other N-word. If you're a dude and you truly value your peace, you will not tolerate this. Any of this behavior, once you tolerate it, it's now permanently on the relationship menu. Uh. Well, you grow more gorgeous by the minute. Number eight, once the nagging starts, the snooping is right behind that. You're gonna come home from work one day and find your computer logged into shit that you didn't log into. And your phone? Well, that's gonna blink around the house by teleportation or ghost travel. Yeah, that's how you explain it. This is the unholy trifecta, dudes. 
No slot C, fight picking, and now snooping. Guess what? She belongs to the streets. She's having a forest ran through that wood chipper when you're not home. She does this because she's looking for justification for her own evil behavior. Don't believe me? Talk to your friends or mutual friends and find out if she had a need to vent. Say nothing, you understand? Get a lawyer! These type of women will make up all kinds of shit to turn your friends and family against you, and they do it on the regular. And why do they do this? Because they actually feel like you deserve that treatment. You don't see them for what they truly are, a 304, and they harshly judge you for that. That is why you never shake the horror tree and expect a wife to fall out. Because this is what's waiting for you, gentlemen, and make no mistake, you do deserve it. If, if you put up with it, if you will sacrifice your self-respect on the altar of Poon, I don't know what to tell you. And if you're looking for sympathy once it all blows up in your face, you know where you can find it, in the dictionary between shit and syphilis. Winning! <laughs> and considering who you're banging, you should probably see a doctor and get some antibiotics. Just saying. Number nine, her habits overall change. The biggest telltale sign of this is she starts gaining weight. She pulls the pin on the fat grenade because she's comfortable in the relationship and she's taking you for granted. And she honestly thinks if she gains 50 pounds or more, she will have more options than you. And here's the sad part, gentlemen. If she's on the young side, She's actually right. But once they hit the big 3-0, they're wronger than two boys butt-fucking in church with the priest doing CPR on somebody's ass. <laughs> and this happens around the time where the women start saying, Where are all the good men at? Well, you stopped bagging him, you started nagging him and dragging him. And then you started spying on him and cheating on him. I wonder where those guys went. Number 10, because women always tell themselves, she asks you if it's okay to go off the pill. Well, you know, all the side effects and everything, and it makes me so moody and it makes me gain weight. Here's the deal, dude. Even if you say, absolutely not, she's still going off the pill and you're getting baby trapped. Just accept it now. Get snipped or you're going to get clipped. Yeah, you know what? That's a pointless argument right there. That's like if your dad says, I fucked your mom. It's like, like, I can't argue with that. And that does it for the two main lists. And gentlemen, you have to ask yourself a question here. <laughs> Is it worth it? Really? Is it worth it? I think not. With that being said, there are a few strategies you can use to head this off at the pass. Number one, put everything in writing. Because if they want to change it after the fact, you can hold them accountable. And we all know how much Western women love being held accountable. <laughs> Number two, keep your finances separate except for a joint account where that money goes for expenses and the house. And it doesn't matter if you're banging or just roommates. Every dude should do this. And why? Because it holds everyone accountable and there is a paper trail. Number three, and I feel kind of guilty telling you guys this, but women do it. <laughs> Shit test the bitch. <laughs> you serious? See how she handles problems and setbacks. If necessary, take her out on a date where you've already arranged for shit to go wrong and observe how she handles it all. The more entitled she is, the angrier she will become. In fact, we made a whole video about shit testing. Links in the description box. What's worse? This or I'm late for my period. It's not like I haven't heard that a couple dozen times either. God, are you pregnant? Because I really want to finish high school. Those are the three main tenets right there. And yes, there are others that we are not going to cover now. Like cooking, pets, sibling and family rules. What's gonna happen if one of you has a medical issue? You have to talk about that. And of course, if she has kids, what the hell are you doing in the first place? Bail immediately. 
I know single mothers, and their love bombing game is second to none. They will do cheetah flips and all kinds of positions and shit you didn't even think about. It'll be the best you ever had, but you need to ask yourself why. Do you think it's because they love you? If you do think that, guess what? You are dick thinking. Their love bombing game is so strong because it is fueled by desperation. They want a provider so bad, they can taste it. And it probably tastes like salty DNA screen five. Bottom line, gentlemen, if you're with a person who will drive around for weeks with the oil light on, it has to be worth it. We did a whole video called the Pussy to Frustration Ratio. Links in the description. And that's if YouTube hasn't pulled it down and didn't tell us. Color me shocked. With that being said, dudes, tread carefully out there. There are sharks in the water, snakes in the grass, and the consequences are dire. So please, gentlemen, watch your six, because Murphy, he likes his ass play. <laughs> See you later. Space Ghost is on. <laughs> Listen, man, when I bought that black futon upstairs that had that chalk outline on it, and I was with this girl at the time, and, she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking at him like, it's like 120 bucks. I'm like, hey. What will you take for the futon? He's like, it's, it's priced to 120. I'm like, a there's a chalk line of a dead body on it. And he, he looks, he goes, oh. 20. <laughs> it's 20, 25 dollars. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe you're buying it. I'll, I'll flip the mag. What is that one? He probably is no deep. I'm, I'm looking at him like, there doesn't seem any uh, rotten seepage in the mag. The look on her face is like, it'll be fine. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was a good day right there.